This is Leaders in the Trenches, and your host today is Gene Hammett. Hi, this is Gene Hammett. I'm your host at Leaders in the Trenches. My question for you today is, how do you align your people and communicate about where you're going? Now, I know that's a really big question, but your job as a leader is likely to align the people to the work. You know, create um, uh, mechanisms and create a language that allows everyone to move in the same direction together. Now, this is something that you probably know, and I'm, you know, I'm smiling to myself, just really kind of thinking this is so juvenile. But here's the problem: not many people do it well. They think they're doing it, or they stress about doing it, or they tolerate certain things that that detract away from that alignment. But they really aren't aligning around the core issues like they need to. So what does that mean for you? Well, I really think that when you move your business forward, you want to make sure that everyone has objectives and key results that are going for. You may know that that's a common term called OKRs. Um, The OKRs stand for objectives and key results. So if you had a common language for everyone to align together, you'd have something really special. You would have a way for people to communicate about where they're going and and the key results around that, and you would have people working together on it. So I reached out to someone that I thought would be a really great person to as an expert in this kind of conversation, and I found uh, the the co-founder of WorkBoard. Uh, This is Deidre Packnard, and Deidre is really intelligent. We talk a lot about what the objectives and key results are, We talk about certain things that are necessary for you to be successful when you're aligning around the OKRs, and we talk about why it matters for your company. So stay tuned to this interview with Deidre. Hi, Deidre. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. How are you? I am fantastic. Well, I'm glad to have you at Leaders in the Trenches. Tell us a little bit about you and who you serve. I am CEO and co-founder of WorkBoard, which is a software company that helps organizations accelerate growth by making alignment and accountability remarkably easy. Well, alignment's really an important issue for companies, and we know what it's like when we don't have alignment. Um, Tell us what it's like from your perspective when you have alignment at, at the highest levels. Yep. So one way to think about alignment is if everybody is actually on the same page and working in the same direction, as an organization, we can ex- achieve extraordinary things. When only a few people understand what direction we're headed, maybe the leadership team knows what the strategic priorities are and everybody else is just doing what they did last week, right? we grow slower and we go slower, ultimately. One of the big advantages that young companies that startups have is they have an extraordinary amount of alignment on the mission and the metrics. And it allows them to skyrocket past slower moving, less aligned, larger entities, right? That can't get everybody galvanized around the plan. Now, I just did an interview with someone. We talked a lot about mission. So you've got some of the data behind this. What, what does it look like when you have alignment on mission? Yeah, I think, and actually, I think alignment and accountability are, are twins and if you've got alignment but nobody's accountable for what we aligned on it's a hollow victory okay so i I think you need both a high degree of alignment and a high degree of ownership and accountability for what we aligned on right when we have that what we see in our customer base is that organizations achieve about 19 percent more in a given quarter than they themselves saw in prior quarters actually a really material boost in their outcomes and their impact quarter over quarter. That is really impressive. Like 19% doesn't sound like much to some of these fast growing companies, but that level of increment quarter upon quarter upon quarter just really is astronomical. Well, when you look at companies' growth rates and you ask, really ask any CEO anywhere in any size company, if you'd like to grow 19% faster, and I can tell you it's an unequivocal yes. Well, I, I will say this. I mean, I interview a lot of people that have astronomical growth rates. I think you know some of my background, but the Inc. 5000, um, like last, the last interview I did uh, just earlier today was 9,000% over a three-year period. Mm-hmm. Now, they, over a three-year period is a little misleading. 
What yeah. was last year? What was last quarter? I can tell you that uh, many of them are growing at three, four hundred percent a year. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's harder as you get bigger, right? Because of the math yeah. elements behind that 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 curve. Um, but I think everyone would want, you know, in, even in my company, you know, a nineteen percent improvement with each person on the team working. I mean, that starts to compound in a really great way. Mm -hmm. It does. Yeah. Where did all this come for you? Like, why is studying this side of business performance something that, that really caught your interest? So a, a couple of reasons. The, the headline, right, is that a company's growth rate is the single biggest factor in the company's value. Right? It's the one thing. Yeah. Really, the one thing. And uh, so first principle, it's how fast are we growing, right? The, the second and sort of more personal reason is, I, uh, my last company, we had a high degree of alignment on mission and metrics. Like everybody was uh, really highly aware of not only where the company was going, but where their team contributed into that and how each of the peer teams uh, contributed into the whole, right? And when IBM bought that company many years later and I was running a, a business inside IBM, I was trying to drive the same level of alignment and clarity and measurement to drive high growth inside that environment. And a couple things there, when the market opportunity was very large, the market was growing, so we of course had the opportunity to grow. But we had a lot more layers in the organization, so we needed the strategic priorities to go down seven, eight, and nine layers. And of course we operated in many more countries, so we had to, it had to flow across time zones as well. And what I found was in that large environment, there's a lot of friction, on getting everyone aligned and driving a high degree of measurement and accountability that doesn't exist in younger startup growth and, and high growth companies. And so I, I started looking at what it took to get that same degree of alignment and motivation and ownership in a large entity and realized we were poorly armed. We didn't have the right tool set. And in fact, we had no tool set. Our, our tools were people and PowerPoint, which Really at this stage in 2019, that's the wrong tool set. It needs to be digital, it needs to be data-driven, it needs to be transparent. The process of getting aligned and driving accountability for a plan should be the best run process, the most automated process in our business, not the least automated process in our business. And that seemed clear as day to me. I, so I left IBM, went back to my original investors, the prior company and said, there's a whole area of business that's not running as well as it could. And it's an area of business that getting aligned on the plan and driving accountability for the plan. It's the area of the business that your shareholders care most about. This matters. Let's go solve this problem. I like the way you think about this because, you know, you don't sit around too long. I mean, I, I, I can be honest with you. And I didn't have the courage when my business got to a certain point. I got a little bit uh, complacent, if you will. But you've looking back at the history, you, you see opportunities and you, you take action. Um, is that fair to say? Yeah, this is my third company I founded. And um, yes, that's fair to say. <laughs> um, when you think about this, this new kind of gap that, that opened up and you saw it, did you have any struggles getting people to pay attention to uh, yeah. the new way to do it? Yeah. Yeah. And that's, uh, yes, absolutely. And it's an experience I've had in prior companies as well, right? What's clear to a founder, uh, entrepreneurs early on is, is often not clear to anyone else yet, right? And a big part of entrepreneurship is uh, belief, right? That they don't see it, they don't see it, they don't see it. Wait, it'll come. It'll be clear to everyone else soon, right? And you just have to have this sort of patience to let others arrive at the same place. And in this case, a couple of years ago, I spent a lot of time saying, hey, you really need to have everybody aligned on the plan and you need a high degree of accountability if you want to participate in high growth markets where there are disruptive forces. People say, no, nah, no, nah, we're fine. It's, it's good. We're all good. And maybe 2018, that started to tip where all of a sudden it was really clear to everyone that the transition to SaaS business models or as a service business model put a premium on lateral alignment across sales, marketing, development, and customer success. And that started to break as companies moved to that as a service model. So they said, wait, wait, we need to have better alignment. 
And then the external rate of change, right? How fast markets are being disrupted, how fast markets are changing, that put a lot of pressure on how quickly we could get everybody on the same page. And then this change in millennials in our workplace and what they want from their job. If they don't know how they drive value at your company and that their work matters, they'll just go to the startup next door where they can see their impact. And yeah. so as those pains got more acute, it got a, a lot more obvious to a lot more people that we need to quickly align on strategic priorities that are evolving and we need to be able to execute really well against those if we want to lead our market space. And these need to be fundamental capabilities of the company, not accidents or happenstance or luck. And, you know, we've gone this far. And we, I don't think we've said the word goals inside of this. Yes. Um, but what we're really talking about is kind of a, a, a new way to cast the way we set and think about goals inside of an organization. Would you agree with that and go a little deeper? I think goals is a uh, kind of a red flag word and everybody loads it up with something different. And I, I specifically don't use the word goals and I use strategic priorities instead because it, goals have, for many, have become the thing by which you measure individuals' performance. And I think it's important to measure individual performance. What I'm talking about is how do we grow the business? Yeah. And that's a little different than how we grow people. And where I think there is uh, a vacuum is the conversations and the direction setting that happens at the team level through the organization. And what's this team's impact? How does it align into what the company is trying to accomplish? Is what this product team is building the same thing as the marketing and the product management team that are trying to get into the marketplace? Are those different? And so I, I end up thinking about those things not as individual goals at all, but I end up thinking about them as what's our growth plan for the company and what are the strategic priorities that help us drive that growth plan and is the organization aligned up around that so that we have functions working in concert to drive that growth. And when I say goals, most people think we're talking about the performance review at the end of the year. And I think most of us would agree that if having goals and performance reviews at the end of the year was going to be the big driver of growth, we wouldn't be having this conversation today. <laughs> something missing, right? Yeah. I talk to a lot of people that, that have, you know, a yearly survey or they do the, the once a year kind of review of that performance. And my thought is it's just not, it's not often enough for the pace of change that we're going through. And your people want more feedback for their own level of growth. Yeah. Are, are you seeing that in the data that you have across yeah. these companies? Yeah, we're seeing two things there. One is, um, and we're big proponents of uh, having teams set objectives and key results, aligned objectives and key results at the team level, where it's the team coming together to articulate its best possible outcomes that are in alignment with the strategic priorities of their organization. And that team level conversation is often completely missing in organizations. The teams manage activity. They never stop and pause and think about, well, wait a minute, what are we trying to accomplish? And does that align? And what value are we creating here? And then let's drive the right activity, right? And so the, the team conversation, setting and aligning OKRs at the team is really, really potent. And then, in addition to that, how does a manager, given team alignment on OKRs that connect to the company strategy, how does a manager then give good and regular coaching to help an individual make their best contribution to the team? I love the way you're talking about this because I talk, I do so much research on how to go beyond responsibility to take ownership. Mm -hmm. That's what I talk about on stages and whatnot. But one of the key aspects is a lot of people, and you're going to take the team perspective, they're not taking ownership because they didn't create the goal. They didn't create the end strategic priority. And um, you're saying that, you know, if they create it, they take more ownership. Is that, is that fair to say? Yeah. Actually, we, there's a, a set of things we think interlace. So if you, if you want accountability, you need to provide clarity. Okay. 
right? Which is your ownership comment. If I don't know what it is I'm accountable for, I'm simply unable to own it. Mind reading isn't on anybody's resume, right? So what I love about OKRs at the team level is it, it is a vehicle by which we get radical clarity on what it is we're trying to achieve and how we're measuring success. And now I can be accountable for it. But if you really want amazing, extraordinary accountability, you want ownership, not forced accountability, then you also need to go the next level, which is not only do I own those OKRs, but I authored them from a place that imagined my best possible. That was a team talking about what would be great, things that inspired us, things that we were really excited about how they were going to contribute. And we feel a sense of ownership because we, in fact, really want to go achieve those things because we think that would be great. And then I own it in a completely different way. I mean, step back and think about the company level. The company needs innovation. It doesn't get that without inspiration. And companies yeah. need speed. And we don't get speed unless people have enthusiasm. And the goal process of old robs organizations of inspiration, of enthusiasm, of any sense of ownership. It's a forced march. And we've all been down it. And it didn't break through for any of us. It's time to move that aside and rethink how we grow our companies now in the markets in which we operate now, which looks very different than when Peter Drucker in 1948 wrote his first management book, right? Yeah. Which is where most of our goal processes originate from. It's a good time to reinvent the process. It, it's, it's well overdue, right, Deidre? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, you know, I think too, you know, to take it even a level deeper, because when you as a team are defining those AK OKRs, you are able to take ownership of the process to get there, mm -hmm. right? Whatever, whatever changes that happen, the, whether there needs to be a new technology that needs to be put in place, but you, you have taken ownership as opposed to someone handing you a set of tools or a set of steps. I'll um, tell you, right. Yeah. When you get, is there anything else that you would say as far as what you've seen helps people take real ownership of yeah. the work that they're doing? Yeah, I think we use the, in old school goals, you think of, we're gonna cascade goals, right? We think of it a little differently and we like the word localize. I'm gonna localize the strategic priorities to our team. Okay. And localize in, meaning translated into the nouns and the verbs and the numbers of what this team does. And the verbs in marketing are different than the verbs in sales, right? And the verbs at the top of the development organization are different than the verbs on the frontline dev team working on the mobile app, right? But when they translate the company's strategic priorities and localize those into their own language and inform it by what they know to be true, their expertise, their insight, their truth, their starting point, right? What their fact base is and what their own intellectual contribution is, they have a different relationship to that local version of the strategic priorities. And I love this combination. We have a global set of strategic priorities and a local set. And they connect and they align, right? But I own my local set and I'm deeply connected to them. It's my language, our dialect in the DevOps team, which is different than the dialect in the marketing and demand gen team, right? And it's the, the cascade notion is a little bit more dictatorial. Localizing it is a reference to the strategic priorities above and then really translating it into our language and informing it by our insight. And I think that's the shift where if it's our nouns and our verbs and it's our intellect in it, our ownership and our connection to it, much, much stronger. I think the other thing about OKRs is very different than traditional uh, goal setting and, and part I really attach to as an entrepreneur is that the conversation is around what's our best possible? Not our most predictable, not our most probable, not our mediocre. Yeah. What's our best possible? And then we have a conversation in our own nouns and verbs that's aligned with the company's strategic priority about what our best possible is. A couple things happen. If we imagine our best possible, then we can organize to achieve it. And if we imagine it and organize for it, we greatly improve the probability that we in fact do achieve it. Old school, we don't even imagine it. We just go with the most predictable. 
And then we organize for most predictable and then we get exactly that, the most predictable, which is slow growth, steady, kind of baking mediocre into the process. This shift to OKRs changes what we talk about. It changes it to include, well, what would be great? And yeah. I, I don't know frontline teams that don't want to have that conversation. What would be great? That's why they come to your building in the morning to do something that really matters. And this process actually brings that forward. It actually makes it a regular habit of the company to have conversations about in alignment, what would be great from our team's perspective. Deidre, that's such a smart way to look at this. And, and I know there's probably a lot of things we haven't touched on as it comes to team alignment and accountability. So what have I left out as we begin to wrap this up? One of the big uh, moves we see is rethinking what team is. So not just functional teams, right? But the pods and the squads, the product level teams, groups of people who come together to accomplish things. So reimagining what teams are and providing them with a common framework for defining and aligning the impact they're gonna create in a quarter time period. I think we see everywhere this shifting in the way people team and it's a, I think a giant acknowledgement of the fact that teams are the engine of value creation in our organizations. So thinking about OKRs as a device and thinking about teams as fluid and hyper flexible is really a, a potent way to unlock growth and to unlock innovation and unlock more inspired teams in our organization. I don't know your answer on this, but I wanna ask you anyway. Um, I ask a lot of fast growth leaders as a leader, what's more important, your employees or your customers? What would you say? I would say that my favorite word is and. <laughs> what if you had to pick one? I don't think they're in competition with each other. I, I, Fair to I, say. Yeah, if we set it up that they are, I think we've, um, we've sort of, we've missed the mark. I think there's, um, I'll say in the first instance, the relationship we have with other human beings is first. True. And so we relate from a place of value, respect, and compassion, then, then we're, whichever constituent you are, right? We should behave and operate, I think, and expect from each other a level of engagement that is, uh, has a lot of integrity in it and has a lot of uh, personal connection in it. I, I don't know how much I've shared with you before, but when I ask most Inc. 500 or 5,000 level leaders, it's 94% going to be employee first. Because they, they see such the importance of yeah. the people and the teams inside the organizations and how they translate into serving clients yeah. uh, and customers. So I really appreciate you being here uh, at Leaders in the Trenches and sharing your insights on team alignment. It was a pleasure. Thank you very much. Fantastic. Love the, all the concepts in here because everyone aligning together and working together is the key. And what Deidre talked about around um, objectives is really powerful stuff. And you may think you're already doing it. So my challenge to you is how could you do it to a higher degree? How could you align people on the same objectives? And I've done so many interviews around this lately that it really is a passion of mine to, to really help companies understand how do you, as a leader, create this space? If you have any questions about what that means for you, make sure you reach out to me at gene at genehammett.com. As always, lead with courage. I'll see you next time.